What is up, fellow nerds, and welcome back to the Dapper Snapper Gaming Channel, and welcome back to How Do I Want to Do This? This is our series where we take a look at all playable options available to players in Dungeons & Dragons 5th Edition, and we rank them on a scale of 1 to 10, and then we build them together. Now, today we are ranking the final Barbarian subclass. It has been a long time coming. There are quite a few Barbarian subclasses, but we have finally made our way to the Zealot, and I am very excited to bring you this one final subclass before moving on to Bard. Before we do that though, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already. As you can see, most people who watch the channel are actually not subscribed, so please, don't be one of those people. Go ahead, click the subscribe button, it really, really helps out. We're working our way to a thousand subs, trying to get to monetization hopefully sometime soon, and so every little bit helps. And of course, leave me a comment down below letting me know who your favorite D&D deity is. I, I personally am partial to the trickery domain clerics list. Uh, there are a lot of, of really cool prankster uh, minor gods, but let me know what you think down below. So the Zilla Barbarian takes what's really good about the Barbarian and then just kind of turns it up a little bit more. Um, this subclass is really cool as it deals with both dealing damage as well as just kind of not dying. Um, and so it's really, really cool. It's really, really fun to play. You might recognize this as Yasha from Critical Role Campaign 2. This is the subclass that Ashley chose. And so it is really cool. If you wanna watch a lot of play of this subclass, obviously check that out, of course. So let's go ahead and see what we get on this path. So at third level, we get two features, and the first is Divine Fury. So what this does is this gives us a little bit of extra damage whenever we hit a target on our turn. So the first creature that we hit during our turn, we can deal an extra 1d6 plus half our Barbarian level. And so this is some pretty nice damage. You know, by the time we get this, it's 1d6 plus one. By level 20, it's 1d6 plus 10. You know, I mean, it's not the best as far as damage goes, so I can't really give it a 10 out of 10, but it is free damage. So, you know, this is something that's every turn. There's not a saving throw, it's just part of it. So, I mean, if you wanna just deal extra damage for absolutely free, this is the way to go. It's pretty cool. Now you get to choose either necrotic or radiant damage here when you take the subclass. You do not get to re-choose later. This is, you get one and that's it. Uh, personally, I think radiant is going to give you a little bit more mileage, but that could depend on what your campaign actually is. Um, if you're going through Curse of Strahd, obviously, <laughs> Radiant's gonna do really, really well for you. Um, but there are plenty of others where Necrotic could give you a little bit more mileage, and so just look at what you're doing, where you are, and maybe that should help you uh, to pick whichever one is best. Overall, I give this a seven out of 10. The scaling is pretty poor. Uh, it definitely could scale a little bit better. I don't like the half our Barbarian level. I would prefer to see it as equal to your Barbarian level, so 1d6 plus your Barbarian level, I think would be totally fair. Um, and you're gonna be doing a lot of damage. So I get their, I get their want to um, to keep that back, but I, I, I think that it would be totally fine to, to have that fully on there. Um, yeah, this is a really cool ability. I really, really like it. Definitely worth using every single opportunity that you possibly can. Also at third level, we get Warrior of the Gods. And so this basically just keeps you alive for longer if you would have died. Um, so, you know, we get a lot of features as the Barbarian anyway that allow us to stay alive and allow us to stay up. You know, we, we think of the ability that allows us to make constitution saving throws if we would be knocked to zero HP. And so that keeps you up for a little bit longer. With this, you get to take out all of the costly spell components in casting things like Revivify, Raise Dead, that sort of thing. That's pretty valuable, right? Because when your cleric or whoever is, is casting Revivify, you have to imagine that they're giving up quite a bit as far as they had to go find this diamond, they had to go find this thing and buy it with a lot of money. But with you, they don't have to use it. It's just, hey, there you go, you're back up. So I think that there is some value there. Um, I, I don't think that it's anything crazy busted or anything like that, but I do think that there is a lot of value there. I'm gonna give it an eight out of 10. It's just one less thing to worry about for your party, um, for your party healers, rather. Now, if you don't have a party healer, 
then th you're not going to use this, um, which depending on your party size and who you're playing with may or may not happen. You know, I I'm currently running Curse of Strahd and we don't really have a dedicated healer right now. So, you know, it happens. It, it happens all the time. So if that does happen, then you're going to get a lot less mileage and your ranking would go down. But in your typical party where you have at least one person that can cast one of those spells, then you're going to be just fine and you will actually take a lot of the stress out of their lives. At 6th level, we get Fanatical Focus, and so when you fail a saving throw during your rage, you can just roll again and use the new roll. That's pretty neat, right? You can use this once per rage rather than once per day, um, so that's pretty cool. So obviously the number of uses is going to scale as you level up and get more rages, and then, you know, it's going to be unlimited number of rages at level 20, which is fantastic, so you can basically just end your rage restart your rage and you get this and you get this feature back by that point if you ever get that far um but i think that this is pretty cool um we already have advantage on dexterity saving throws we already have advantage on strength saving throws because we are raging so we're doing good there constitution is not something we should be failing so we're good there this covers our mental stats, which is one of our weaknesses. So this is really cool. So if you would be the target of a wisdom saving throw, something to charm you, to frighten you, to mind control if you're high enough level, you know, that sort of thing, then this could come in absolutely clutch. It basically is just kind of free advantage, sort of. You see a bad roll and you get to roll again. Um, so I think that this is pretty fantastic. I think it's a 7 out of 10. I don't think that it's anything busted, but it's definitely useful when it comes up. And I mean, barbarians are going to be the target of the wisdom saving throws. So this can really help you to blow enemy casters spell slots. Um, although spell slots are kind of going away with the new way they're doing monsters, but that's for another video. Um, but yeah, so this will definitely come in handy when, when you're the target of those kind of things. So definitely useful. At 10th level, we get Zealous Presence, and so what this does is it basically gives us a quasi-inspiring leader type of thing going on. Um, and so as a bonus action, though, instead of a 10-minute speech, we can give this awe-inspiring battle cry and up to 10 creatures within 60 feet of us, which is really cool as a bonus action. Uh, they get advantage on attack rolls and saving throws until the end of your next turn. That's pretty cool, right? Yes, it's once per long rest, but when this comes in clutch, this could really come in clutch. Um, this could save people's lives because this is saving throws and attack rolls. That is absolutely wonderful. It is not ability checks, so don't think that it gives any kind of advantage there, um, but it does give attack rolls and saving throws, which is really, really nice. Um, I think this is very useful. Um, if you give this to your fighter, your fighter is going to be very, very happy with advantage plus action surge. That's wonderful. Use this with your rogue. Your rogue is going to be your best friend too because that's just free advantage and so free sneak attack as well. So there's a lot of really, really cool stuff. A lot of classes really, really benefit from advantage um, and this can, can really, really do well. So I think it's wonderful. I think that you're going to get a lot of use out of this. Even though it's once per day, you line this up right with the right party dynamic, and this is going to end up with an absolute bomb. Finally, at 14th level, we get Rage Beyond Death. And so this is where we get to go nuts. Um, so this basically keeps us from falling unconscious when we hit zero HP during a rage. Now we're going to keep making death saves. Um, and so, you know, we could fail three death saves and technically be dead. But as long as that rage is going during that minute, you are still going and you're still just surviving and going ham and just killing everything. And here's the thing, right? It gives you a minute for your party to heal you. They don't have to do that right then. You know, your cleric can just wait to just cast healing word at the end of your at the end of your rage and since you're not unconscious and like you can just go and just more health there you go so it's pretty great uh this is a 10 out of 10 i mean if if your barbarian wasn't already immortal enough 
this just kind of solidified it. I mean, it's already going to be hard for you to drop to zero HP with your constitution saving throws. But if you fail that con save for whatever reason, and then you make it to this, you're still going to be just fine. So, th yeah, th this ability is really, really, really good. Um, and it just it just keeps you from ever dying. You're just basically immortal at this point. So what do you think of the subclass overall? I've got to give this a 9 out of 10. This is a really, really cool subclass. Um, the extra damage is always fantastic. It's every single turn on the first enemy that you attack. You can't understate that. Yes, the damage is a little bit underwhelming, but it's really good. It's really, really good. And all of these features work together to basically make you a high damage and also high survivability tank build, which is something that not all of the barbarians can necessarily specialize in. Um, they can do one or the other, but this one allows you to do both pretty effectively, especially if you get to level 14 and get Rage Beyond Death. By that point, you're kind of immortal uh, and you're just basically never going to die unless the dice absolutely hate you. Um, but I mean, even if the dice hate you and somebody else just casts Healing Word, as long as you get that one HP, you're good. You're, you're done. You're fine. So yeah, it's it's really, really cool. I really, really like this subclass. Um, it's a lot of fun and it's really strong. It's not quite totem warrior barbarian. Um, I, I can't I can't in good conscience give it the same ranking as as the totem, but I'm OK with putting it right under it. Um, it's such a great cohesion of abilities that all work together rather than just being a bunch of random stuff thrown on a page It all works together in in an amazing way um, And so Yeah, the the totem warrior just never gets to zero HP the zealot gets to zero HP and then laughs it off So, you know, it's it's just really really cool It's really great and I hope that you guys will have fun playing them so that is all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. Make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe if you haven't already so you don't miss our future videos later this week. On Friday, we're going to be building one of these together and next week we start on bards. And boy, bards are their own thing. <laughs> they are weird, but very powerful and uh, very fun depending on whether you're playing or DMing. I, I DM most of the time and so... Fun is a relative word, but still, bards are bards, and so we will be talking about those next week. So until then, stay safe out there, stay healthy. I know it's crazy, but please do your best. Wash your hands, all those good things, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.